when Muzi Works sent me this original R1, the first thing I said is, man, I really wish this had a GPS in it. Because I said my phone, the iOS, still to this day doesn't allow, doesn't do like real-time phone updates. Plus, if I ever wanted to just deploy this as a tracker, I could. I don't have to have the phone. I could deploy it as a tracker. So I can't wait to show you what they've sent me today and what they're unveiling. A brand new uh, radio slash node. I'm calling them nodes, but really they're radios. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to show you what uh, Muzi Works has in their lineup that's brand new. Stick with me. We'll show you what it is. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about off-grid communications to help you prepare for disasters. We talk about the tools, the tech, and strategies that keep you connected when everything else goes down. Before we get into today's unboxing, let's talk a second about MeshTastic. You see, MeshTastic is an open source, long-range communication platform that uses LoRa radios to send text message, GPS locations. You can do sensor data all without cell phone service, Wi-Fi, or even internet. It forms what is called a mesh network, meaning that each node extends the range of the others. The more people run in these nodes, the bigger and stronger the network becomes. You see, it's a game changer for emergency communications, off-grid operations, and disaster preparedness because you can still pass messages, send location updates, or even call for help even if the grid is completely down. And that brings us to what's on the bench today. The new R1 Neo from MusiWorks. MusiWorks sent over two of these units for me to test and review. The R1 Neo is now available to order, and it's already getting a lot of attention for its rugged design. It's got a built-in GPS and multi-day battery life, all in a smaller, more efficient form factor. Now, this isn't just a simple refresh of the original R1, but MusiWorks completely redesigned the power system to get every possible bit of runtime out of the internal battery. They've removed the diode voltage drop that used to limit capacity, built a circuit that shuts down that 3.3 voltage rail completely when powered off, and even use a transistor to fully cut power to the GPS module instead of letting it idle in sleep mode. That's the kind of attention to detail that matters when you're out in the field and every milliamp counts. In testing so far, I've been able to get about two full days of battery life and with some fine tuning like adjusting a GPS updates interval or minimizing Bluetooth activity, it's definitely possible to stretch that to around three days. And of course, firmware updates will continue to improve efficiency. So these numbers can still change as the platform evolves. Let's talk about what's on the inside. The R1 Neo is built with a 1500 milliamp uh, lithium poly battery, a USB-C port with a weather sealed compression gasket, a custom SMA connector with an O-ring, a rugged enclosure made of aircraft grade aluminum and 3D printed PET carbon fiber. This thing is built for field comms. Compact, sealed, and durable. It's exactly what you want in a long-term off-grid deployment or community mesh network node. So in today's video, we'll unbox one of these, taking a look at what's inside and talking through what's changed from the original R1 and how that impacts real world usability. If you'd like to check it out or pick one up today, there's an affiliate link down in the description that helps support the channel and allows me to keep testing new gear like this. All right, let's go over to the workbench and see what's inside the new Muzi.Works R1 Neo. One thing I like about Muzi Works is they, they do a really good job packaging their products. And um, in this box, they, they sent me, here's one of the new nodes. Looks like they also sent me a holster for it. And stickers and candy, who doesn't enjoy that? So that's awesome. Some stickers out here. Well, so let's close that up. All right, let's 
and look at the. Uh, I can tell you the one that I've been using. I've already. You can see some scratches here just from wear and tear that I've already been doing to it, carrying it. But uh, I have banged it, uh, getting in and out of the truck a few times. And you can see the old one. This is my original one, my Everyday Carry R1. And again, I, I really like it. I still use it uh, to this day. My only issue with it was, I, I, again, the iOS doesn't do a really good job with the uh, position and it's something to do with uh, I believe it has to do with the uh, privacy and stuff concerns and some blowback they've had for some of the apps so anyways this is the original R1 they did make a version that uh, had the exter external antenna as well but for my I like to throw this in my front pocket just carry it that way but again I, I mentioned to Muzi I'm like hey, talk to Simon over there and I said hey if we could we could throw a GPS in that. That would be like one of the hands down best ones I've ever seen. So I'm going to set this one here to the side. This is one I've already been testing with. So let's just jump in and see. This is the R1 Neo. Well, well designed case. Kind of gives you the, I kind of get the iOS, uh, iPhone type Apple feel here with this boxing. So really good on that. Professional. And there you go. Little USB C to C. And there's the unit. Complete setup instructions. They tell you to download the app. Press the button at the top of the one R1 Neo to turn it on. Now I gotta tell you, it took my wife and I a couple times to figure this out. I kept saying the top, and I'm like, all I see is the LED up here. Because when this first turns on. This one's setting. I've been let me share this one on show you. It's a light. And that's something I don't know if you heard that. Something else about this unit is it does have the piezo buzzer in here. Let me just check and see if this one's completely dead. Probably been good if I'd have charged it for the video, but got a cable right here, so we'll just plug it in. The other thing I do like about this is the bottom it's sealed up really well. So you can see here's the uh, the original unit, and because uh, it kept saying to push the power button, I'm like, there's there's no button. See that flickering up there? That is. And it's got uh, different colors. There's the little tone, the piezo buzzer. So the button, long press five seconds, it shuts down the device. Double press, send a ad hoc ping. Triple press, toggles the GPS on and off. Hold for eight seconds, enter DFU mode for firmware update. And it does have a little uh, LED indicator. White is... Uh, just the normal status, kind of like this one's doing right now. Red is charging. Blue is message received. Yellow is button press. Green is shut down or reboot. And purple is DFU mode. For complete instructions, you can scan the, the QR code. So this actually, uh, I thought this was pretty cool. They got a little sticker right here for the last four of your, your ID on there. Pairing code real clean. I was really impressed with that when they sent that out to me. But uh, I will say on this, this is uh, pretty tight to go in. I suppose you could do it either way. But uh, once you put it in there the first time, then it. It's, I mean, it's not going to fall out or anything like that. But I really like this bottom part that's real slick. Again, with these, you don't want to turn them on with the antennas off. Lori does not like that mesh tastics. So now that I've got this in, the next step is just programming and doing the firmware. Uh, I'm going to let this one charge for a few hours, get a good charge on it. But uh, 
Go check out their website. It does have a, a lanyard holder here if you care to do it that way. But uh, go check out their website. I'll leave a link down in the description. So when I first put this one in, I, I, I set it to my normal mode of um, doing the um, connect to it here. So when I first set it up, I set it as a client mode. And generally I always say these little units like this, they don't need to be in client mode because they're not really relaying much in. Like this one is a client mute. Most of the time I run these as client mute. And um, go here to device. And you can see I've got it set to client mute. And when I did my initial battery testing, that was, uh, I had it on client mode, and I did get about, uh, just about 27 hours. So run it in client mode. Now, that's with the GPS full on. I could have shut that down, played with the timer on there. And uh, they, Simon over at Muzi Works was real cool about sharing some of that information with me. I, I asked him, I said, is there any of this proprietary that we shouldn't be telling anybody and uh, he said, no, He's, he said they're actually working on a new device. And a lot of that information is going to come out then anyway. So, but if you're trying to save battery and get like three days, which honestly, two is always my end goal. You could turn down like some of the GPS request. And uh, he had listed a few couple things like that to kind of help, help get that expanded out a little bit. But uh yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I do like having the piezo buzzer in there. And if you if it annoys you, it's not super loud at all. Uh, matter of fact, if you're if you're in a loud environment, you may miss it. So, but you can enable and disable that. It's not something you have to have. But uh, really pleased with the quality on these. Again, this one's been dropped, banged, hit a lot of times. I started wearing this one on my belt. Uh, just just had it out for a couple weeks now. Uh, I've snagged this on several things. It's, it's fallen down, uh, and it's still doing really good. So <laughs> nothing, nothing to be concerned about there. But uh, yeah, that little button, and uh, you'll feel it there. It's, I, it's an LED button. That's all I can say. But it's, it's really slick, and uh, the, like I said, the build quality is really nice. So when you first get it, you want to go into the Mesh Tastic app, and uh, I've got some videos on here. I'll leave on programming them, but uh, yeah, very durable. They feel like solid. They feel solid. I mean, I I know there's a radio in there, and it's plus the GPS and everything. So, anyways, if you like the the idea of having a GPS in there, that's that's the way to go. I really I really recommend these. Uh, they're they're just solid built. Everything comes with the USB C cable. It is a USB C to C, so you can program with a lot of the newer laptops and computers. You'll, you can still use the old one, but uh, make sure you check out the Quick Start Guide. And I'm going to leave this up on screen if you want to snap a picture of it, get that QR code. But uh, yeah, I really, really am impressed. I, I originally just said, hey, throw a GPS in there, and I think these things will be amazing. But not only did they throw the GPS, but they, they worked on the power situation to help conquer uh, low loss of battery. Uh, they did add the piezo buzzer. And then they had a flashing color display. So that, uh, not display, color flashing LED. And a push button. So that's, it's really clean. Compared to the way we used to have to do like resets or D, DFU mode and stuff. I will say also, don't don't let this, you know how when you put your firmware in and you're uh, waiting for it to reboot, it won't reboot. You have to actually come over it. Basically, anytime it loses power, it goes into like a turn off mode. You just have to push this button one time to get it to come back on. So it took me a minute to figure that out. Uh, but other than that, it's, it is slick. So go check them out on their website. They got multiple colors to choose from and uh, just really good all around. They're modernizing, keeping it going. That's what I like. Uh, like, like seeing that again. That's Muzi Works. Is their website, and I'll leave a link down in the description.